Hey everyone and welcome back to another video where today we will be taking a look at ARK Invest's Genomic Revolution ETF. We'll be taking a look at some of the largest holdings in this ETF and seeing what those companies do. If you're ready, I'm ready, let's go. All right, so the ARK Genomic ETF. This is an ETF that has a basket of 30 to 50 stocks targeting things like CRISPR or you know gene editing, stem cell research, just the future of medicine. The top five holdings are what we're going to be talking about today. Now, these top five holdings make up around about 29% of, of all the assets in this ETF at the time of recording. Of course, this is a very volatile sector, so... It could be 35% by the time you're watching this, or it could even be 20%. Now, a top holding at the time of recording is a company called Pacific Biosciences, and the stock ticker for that one is PACB. Pacific Biosciences produces and manufactures platforms for genetic sequencing. So this company's products help dig into, you know, the building blocks of life, or the Lego blocks, if you will. And what that means is, is DNA is built up of four different components, and these are sequenced in different ways, and that's the sequencing. And so what Pacific Biosciences machines do is they can take a sample, say, of, of my saliva, and they can sequence my entire DNA. And they could do this for other things too, right? They could do it for other humans or animals or plants, just anything that has DNA. And other companies would buy these machines from Pacific Biosciences, and they would be able to sequence what they need to sequence in order to develop new medicines or treatments to target specific diseases. So why is this one in ARK's funds? Why should why should it be there? Why should it be the top holding? Well, well, quite simply, things need to be sequenced in order to be better understood. And this company makes the machines that help companies sequence. So other companies in this list that we're going to go through today, they likely use Pacific Biosciences as a provider of the of the machines that they need to at least start their research process. And so the sequencing of these genomes, that's a key to the future of medicine. And Pacific Biosciences is one of the leading companies in making the machines that get that job done. But Pacific Biosciences, if you'd have invested at the beginning of the year, would have returned more than 400%, which is just tremendous growth, especially for a company that is producing not very great results when it comes to the top line. Revenues have been pretty flat for the last couple of years, and there's no signs that those are going to be taking off anytime soon. So this is a $5.1 billion company and makes up about 7% of ARK's genomic fund today. So the second biggest holding is CRISPR Therapeutics, and this makes up around about 6% of ARK's genomic revolution fund. Now, CRISPR is likely the company that you've heard of the most if you've looked into this industry at all. It is the namesake for the industry in, in a way. CRISPR is a, a technology and CRISPR, in this case, is a company. And what this company does is it uses CRISPR, the technology, to create new treatments for some of the worst diseases we have. And it's tackling cancers, and diabetes, cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, and that's just to name a few. CRISPR has four treatments in clinical trials right now, and another six or so that it's working its way through. So hopefully some of those will be coming to market in the near future. So why is CRISPR included in these ARC funds? Well, it's one of the most mature names in the gene editing space. As I mentioned, it's got four treatments that are currently in clinical trials, and it's inching closer and closer to actual marketable products. CRISPR is still a speculative play, and it's a speculative play that you'd have more than doubled your money on if you'd have invested at the beginning of the year. If you'd have invested at the lows in March, you'd have come close to quadrupling your investment. This is a $12 billion company without a real product yet. So yeah, this is pure speculation right now, there's no telling that the clinical trials are successful. I mean, they're, they're close, but there's no guaranteeing that these clinical trials are successful and that they're better than the products that exist today that don't use gene editing. That's the risk, right? ARC's Genomic Revolution Fund. This is a fund for 
speculative play on the future of the medical industry. And CRISPR truly is the definition of this fund. So third on the list is a company called Twist Biosciences. Stock ticker for that one is TWST. Twist Biosciences manufactures synthetic DNA. It also manufactures something called microplates. But yeah, on the, on the gene side, this company sells genes and it sells gene fragments to research companies that, that need them to test out their products. So as an example, and I don't know if this is the case, but a company like we just spoke about, CRISPR, would buy these genes and gene fragments and they would be able to test out their technologies on these genes and gene fragments before actually using them on humans. So why is this one in ARCS funds? Well, this one, much like Pacific Biosciences, it sells the tools that all these other different companies will need. So individual companies like CRISPR, they may fail. And while I don't think they will, they may fail. But Twist can still sell their genes and gene fragments to the companies that would fill in in CRISPR's space. As time goes on, we're likely to see more and more companies enter the space. That's more and more companies that will need genes to test on, and that's more and more companies that will be buying Twist's products. So Twist is up a tremendous amount this year. The company could have been bought for $21 and change in January of 2020. And today, when I'm recording this video, it's around about $160 a share. It's almost seven times your money. This company is an $8 billion market cap today. Unlike Pacific Biosciences, I like Twist's graphs a lot more, particularly the revenue graphs. This one is taking off. It's up and to the right for the revenues from this company. And that shows that its products are in demand and that demand for its products is growing. Is it growing enough to justify a 700% return? No, it's not growing that fast. I mean, this is definitely, again, a speculative play on the future of this market. And Twist Biosciences has a lot of work to do to justify its position in the market at these prices. So fourth company is Arcturus Therapeutics. A-R-C-T is its ticker. And this one is right about 5% of Arc G's holdings today. Arcturus is focused on discovery, development, and commercialization of treatments for rare diseases. The focus here is on RNA, which is probably something that you've heard a lot of these past couple of months. Now, RNA is what Pfizer and Moderna use for their COVID-19 vaccines. Now, Arcturus is also working on its own COVID-19 vaccine, and that's in clinical trials right now. But it's also working on treatments for things like cystic fibrosis and influenza. It's working on its own influenza vaccine. So why is this one in ARX funds? Well, again, this is because of just innovative medical treatments. It's targeting diseases that affect a lot of people. Influenza is a virus that affects you know millions worldwide each year. COVID-19, we've seen the effects that that has had on the world as well. Cystic fibrosis, that's a big market as is cardiovascular disease, which is another target of Arcturus. Again, like CRISPR, this company does not have anything on the market yet, at least in terms of a wide release, but that did not stop Arcturus from returning more than 800% this year from $10 up to the $90 we see it trading at today. So Arcturus is a $2.4 billion company today, so there's a lot of upside there if it can find a treatment for, for something and get it to market. The question that remains for Arcturus is, is can it see success from its RNA treatments? And we have already seen success with RNA vaccines from Pfizer and Moderna bringing their COVID-19 vaccines to market. But that means that there's probably not much economic upside for Arcturus with its COVID-19 vaccine. Instead, this company is going to have to find success with its influenza work or its cardiovascular work. We don't know if that will happen. We don't know when that will happen. This is definitely something to keep an eye on. The final company we're going to be talking about, this is number five on ARC's genomic list, is not a genomic company at all. It is a technology company and it is Teladoc Health. So Teladoc Health is a company that facilitates doctor's visits online. So instead of going to the doctor's office for something simple like, oh, my stomach hurts, I'm going to go to the doctor. Well, you don't have to go to the doctor, you don't have to get dressed, you don't have to drive, you don't have to sit an hour in a doctor's office. Instead, you can get an appointment with Teladoc. Usually it's a five minute wait and you can talk to a doctor online. You can talk about your symptoms. They can tell you, you know, it's probably something simple. I'll send you a prescription. 
could go that route. Saves a lot of time, saves a lot of effort, saves you from getting COVID-19 by going out to a doctor's office and sitting there amongst a bunch of other sick people for an hour. It's not just stomach aches, you know, it could be a cold, it could be I've got a cough, it could be any number of things. Teladoc Health can get a doctor in front of you, tell you if it seems like it's something more serious, provide some feedback, and just facilitate those first doctor visits. Now, I have not used Teladoc Health's services, but I have used a similar product from my health insurance provider. And I can tell you that it is going to be my first step anytime I'm feeling ill. So yeah, like I mentioned, I don't want to drive to a doctor's office. I don't want to sit there for an hour. Usually it's something very simple. I just want to talk to a doctor, maybe get a prescription to fix it. And this is much simpler way of going about it. So from now on, my first doctor's visit will probably always be a telehealth visit. I'm going to talk to a doctor first. I'm going to try out what they suggest. If that doesn't work, I will go to a doctor's office. And that's probably why something like Teladoc finds itself in this ARC-G fund. While it might not be genomic in nature, it is the future of healthcare. So people like me don't want to go to a doctor's office, would rather just get it sorted in five minutes with a quick video call. That's the future of healthcare, whether you like it or not. Uh, Teladoc is a $30 billion company today. It has seen that hockey stick-like growth that we saw from Twist Biosciences in just in its revenues, but it is still losing money. The question for this one is, can it turn this big surge of patients that it has seen due to COVID-19, can it turn that big surge of patients into recurring patients, basically? You know, are these people once... Once things calm down a bit, once these vaccines start getting more distributed, are the people that use Teladoc going to go back to a doctor's office? For me, that answer is no, not unless I need to. I'm going to continue with video doctors. But for others, I don't know. So yeah, those are the top five holdings, and those five make up a little bit less than 30% of the fund at the time of recording. You probably noticed throughout this video, I said the words, I don't know an awful lot. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if people are going to stick to Teladoc Health once COVID-19 settles down. I don't know if CRISPR will be able to get one of its treatments to the mass market. And that really should be the tagline of ARC's genomic fund is, I don't know. Because while these companies seem like they may be the future of medicine, medicine is hard. I don't know if this stuff works well long term. We don't know if this stuff works well long term. Don't know if something better is going to come along. But what I know is that this fund is targeting the future of medicine. And that's why I've been invested in it for around about 18 months now. And I continue to dollar cost average into this one. I didn't mention this fund in my more recent video about active ETFs, but I did mention its counterpart, ARC-K, which is ARC's innovation fund. Those are two funds that I continue to dollar cost average into. Because for a lot of these things, I don't know, but the team at ARC does a lot of research. They put out really good reports that you can go read and they keep on top of this thing. So if you're interested in investing in the future of medicine, the ARC Genomic Fund is probably your best bet. But to reiterate that warning though, I don't know should be the motto of this fund. Sure, it could see tremendous success. We could see another year of 100% return. We could see another five years of 100% returns, but we could also just see everything collapse and burn beneath us. So definitely, I would say don't allocate all your money into this. For me, I think it makes up around about 4% of my holdings. I'm comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with that 4% vanishing, just knowing that it's in a, a vehicle that could double or triple over the coming five years. For you, though, definitely think, are you willing to lose all the money you've invested in this fund? Because that potentially could happen. If these technologies just crash and burn, you will lose money. But on the opposite hand of that, if these technologies come to market, if they work, if they tackle the worst diseases that we see, you will make a tremendous amount of money by holding the CTF. So that's it for this video today. I'll probably make more videos talking about ARC's funds in the future as holdings change, as new technologies are added. And I want to hear from you though. What what holdings in this ARC genomic fund are you most excited about? You know, these, these companies take a lot of research. This video took a lot of research just trying to understand what those top five do. And this fund holds 30 or 40 companies at the time of recording. So I want to know, 
What are your favorite holdings in this ETF? Do you hold any outside of the ETF? You know, maybe you have a bit of CRISPR as well as the ARK fund. Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube and consider subscribing to the channel. Like I said, I'll put out more videos on ARK's funds. I also make videos on individual stocks and I make videos on data research into the stock market. So there's plenty on the channel every Monday and Friday. Till next time though, take care. I'll see you later.